All right, well, in other news, Australia and uh, the Allies have put out a press release uh, warning rebels in Yemen that there'll be consequences if they don't stop attacking ships in the Red Sea. James, um, Australia didn't send a ship, but we've signed a press release. Yeah, yeah, I was going to... Like, yeah, you stole my good line there, but it was just... Uh, yeah, the only thing that could be possibly more in danger, uh, dangerous for Houthi rebels is an actual warship that would have probably, you know... Uh, throwing the cat among the pigeons a bit more than just a strongly worded letter to quote Team America. Kosher, I want to talk to you about uh, this scandal with Qantas and Anthony Albanese. It's funny, this week Anthony Albanese's been all irate because uh, cabinet papers from years ago have been kept secret as to the reason Australia went to war in Iraq. Have a look at this. Australians do have a right to know what the decision-making process was and my government, my government, believes that this mistake must be corrected. So, OK, fair enough. But now Anthony Albanese is keeping secret his meeting with uh, Alan Joyce, boss of Qantas, and not revealing what they talked about just weeks after Qatar was uh, blocked from having more flights. This is a bit fishy, isn't it? Yes, I think that juxtaposition uh, is very well placed. And, um, you know, we, we know that, that the, the principle of what he's stating, I think, uh, is a good one. More things from the government should be in the public domain, not less. However, it's hard to believe that that principle is real when you see, turn around and see another example where these closed door meetings uh, that happen in private, you know, aren't released into it, does smell a little bit fishy. And uh, I, I know that there have been other instances where the administration does fight uh, Freedom of Information Act requests and so on. So I guess that will continue, but it is interesting given what he just put out there for the Iraq papers just yesterday, to your point. James, uh, Anthony Albanese would have been hoping this thing was dead and buried. Brand new year, new start, and yet here's this thing. It's still lingering around the government. Yeah, just like the detainees. Uh, one thing I would say is let's take Albanese at his word that he was never actually lobbied by anyone from Qantas or by Alan Joyce, despite all these meetings he had with them. Let's say that's true. How influential is Qantas that they can meet with him this many times, never even bring up the Qatar Airways decision and just sit there patiently knowing he's going to do exactly what they want yeah. the, anyway? So it's a pretty damaging look for Albanese if he's telling the truth the whole way, but it just shows that he's just completely in... Uh, you know, just wanting to make Qantas happy, wanting to keep them satisfied and not, you know, putting the Australian public first, putting international airfares first. Yeah, you're right. I don't think the opposition are going to let go of this. They're going no. to keep pushing and pushing, and uh, fair enough. Well, overseas now, the former US President Donald Trump is attempting to overturn the decision by the states of Colorado and Maine to remove him from the ballot in uh, those states. He's asked the Supreme Court to weigh in. Uh, is he likely to succeed, Kosher? Uh, I think most legal scholars believe yes, and these cases were going to be headed to the Supreme Court anyway, either on appeal or this way uh, in an expedited fashion. He's got multiple layers of defence that his defence team is working on. One is presidential immunity, which is that you cannot prosecute presidents for past actions that they took while they're actually in office. That uh, defense has been out there. One is that there is no mechanism actually for states to remove unilaterally federal candidates from the ballot of a federal election. One is that the 14th Amendment provision uh, requires an act of Congress. It's not something that unelected secretaries of state or judges can uh, unilaterally do, and so on and so forth it goes. So what is this really about? It's about the political angle, using the justice system to create sort of a, a political overhang. And, you know, who knows? It's a high-stakes manoeuvre. I think that's what all eyes are on, where either on the one hand, it's galvanising a lot of support around him, including with people who don't like him and never liked him, because they see this for what it is, political persecution. And then there's, on the other hand, people are going to find him just a little bit too much if he does get convicted or taken off the ballot, and they just won't be able to ultimately vote for him. And I think that's the calculus that both sides are making, and we'll have to see how it all unfolds in the end.